In this second tutorial, we will factor using the special patterns for cubes. So now we are talking about our special pattern for cubes. You can factor the sum or the difference of two perfect cubes. Again, we're talking about two things that are binomials, so that's the indicator that there is some sort of special pattern going on. But for cubes, you can factor the sum or the difference. It is a little bit more complicated of a pattern than the difference of two perfect squares, but it is still a pattern that you can recreate and practice. Let's first talk about the sum of two perfect cubes. The sum of two perfect cubes will factor into a binomial times a trinomial. We always go for the binomial first. The binomial, we take the cube root of the first piece to get A in this case. We take the cube root of the second piece to get B and we keep the same sign, plus. The trinomial comes from the binomial. We're gonna take the first piece, we're going to square it, and it's going to go first, a squared. We're going to take the last piece, we're going to square it, and it's going to go last. And because we're squaring to get to it, it will always be positive. The middle comes from taking both of these pieces, multiplying them together, but changing the sign. So A times B, but the opposite of this plus. That's how you factor a sum of two perfect cubes. Let's do it again for the difference. And let's take some more notes with it, because it's the same exact thing, except the signs are going to be different. We're going to factor into a binomial times a trinomial. The binomial comes from taking the cube root, getting A, and the cube root, getting B, and keeping the same sign. We take the cube root, we take the cube root, and we keep the same sign. Next. We're going to take the first piece and we're going to square to get a squared. Next, we're going to take the last piece and we're going to square. And we're going to get b squared. And remember, since we're squaring, it will always be positive. Lastly, we're going to take the two numbers together, we're going to multiply them, and we're going to change the sign. Multiply and change sign. So A times B, of course, is AB. And since we saw a minus sign here, it's going to be a plus sign there. That's it. That's your pattern. Like I said, it's a little bit more complicated than the squares, but we can still do it. I have the sum of two perfect cubes, two cubed, w cubed, and three cubed. So this is going to factor into a binomial times a trinomial. I'm gonna take the cube root of eight w cubed, which would become two w. I'm going to take the cube root of 27, which is three and I'm going to keep the same sign, which is plus. I'm going to square the 2w, and it's gonna go here. 2 squared is 4, w squared is w squared. I'm going to square the 3, and I'm going to get 9, and it's always positive. And then I'm gonna multiply the two numbers together, and I'm gonna change the sign. 2w times 3 is 6w, but it's going to have a minus sign. That's a little bit tighter there. And that is my answer. Now, some people kind of look at this trinomial, and they say, wait a minute, can't I factor this more? And that's a, that's a good thought. 
but this will not factor more. Unless we missed a GCF to begin with, and we didn't. This will not factor anymore. This is our final answer. So let's move on to example four. I see a binomial. Alarm's going off in my brain. I know that there's a special pattern going on here. This is a difference, but something's weird here. It's definitely not a difference of two perfect squares, because two is not a perfect square. But it's not a difference of two perfect cubes, because two is not a perfect cube. The cube root of two is some decimal. So there must be something else that's going on. Oh, wait a minute. I see a two and I see a 250. They're both even numbers. There's a GCF to begin this problem. Always train yourself to look for a GCF. I can pull a two out. When I pull a two out, I'll be left with a cubed. Hey, that's a perfect cube. And two goes into 250 125 times. Hey, that's a perfect cube as well. And of course, the b cubed. So once I pull out the GCF, then I do have a difference of two perfect cubes. And I can factor that. Don't forget about the two. This will factor into a binomial times a trinomial. Now I'm going to erase that, make sure that it's long enough. And let's just go right there. So I left the 2 here. Of course, the 2 is outside. I'll take the cube root of a cubed is a. The cube root of 125 is 5. The cube root of b cubed is b. And I will keep the same sign. I will take the first piece, a, and square it to get a squared. I will take the last piece, 5b, and square it to get 25b squared. And of course, it's always positive because I'm squaring. And then I will take these two pieces and multiply them together, 5ab, but I will change the sign to positive. So there's a GCF to begin, and then it's your difference of two perfect cubes. Let's look at our final example. Again, a binomial must be a special pattern. This is a difference, and these are two perfect cubes, 4 cubed, x cubed, and 1 cubed. So this will factor into a binomial times a trinomial. The binomial, I take the cube root of the first piece, which would be 4x. I, keep the, I take the cube root of the second piece, which is 1, and I keep the same sign, minus. I square the first piece, 16x squared. I square the last piece. And I put it here, 1 squared, of course, is 1, and it will always be positive when I square. Then I multiply these two together, 4x times 1 is 4x, but I change the sign to a positive. And that is your cube pattern. Thanks for watching that. Why don't you practice that a little bit, and I'll see you in class. See you.